Hi, thanks for joining me. First and foremost, a massive, massive thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I hit it earlier this morning, um, early in the morning here. 1,000 subscribers, I am over the moon. I started this channel, you know, under seven months ago and the growth has been absolutely insane. So a massive, massive thank you to all of you. I'm actually gonna be doing a 1K special, but that'll be released in two days time uh, on Wednesday evening. So stay around for that. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you. I couldn't pretend as if uh, I didn't notice that I'd surpassed 1,000 subscribers. So anyway, today's going to be kind of a normal video, but then my 1K special will be on Wednesday. Anyway, today I'm going to be looking at this thing here, root 2 plus root 3, and I claim that it's irrational. And today I want to prove it. Okay, so we all know that root 2 is irrational, and we all know that root 3 is irrational, but does root 2, or is root 2 plus root 3 rational? I claim that it isn't. And now you might go, well, we're just summing two irrational numbers, so surely it, the result is irrational, but we can't just use that logic. And a great way to see why we can't use that logic is if you look at root 2, root 2 is irrational. And if you look at, I don't know, 3 minus root 2, that's also irrational because 3 is rational and root 2 is irrational. So the difference is going to be irrational. So, But then when we add them up, so an irrational plus an irrational, we're going to get 3. And of course, that's rational. Okay, so an irrational plus an irrational isn't necessarily rational, but today I want to prove that in this case, root 2 plus root 3 is irrational. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so like with most proofs of the irrationality of root 2, it's going to be a proof by contradiction. So we're going to suppose for contradiction, root 2 plus root 3 is rational. So then we can write root 2 plus root 3 equals a over b, say, where a and b are positive integers, but in particular, they're co-prime. Okay, because if they're not co-prime, then we can just uh, sort of divide through the numeration and the denominator by any common factors until we reach an a and b that are co-prime. Okay, so we have root 2 plus root 3 equals a over b. The first thing I want to do is just square both sides. So on this side, I get root 2 squared, which is just 2, plus 2 times root 2 times root 3, which is just root 6 and plus root 3 squared, which is 3. And on the right-hand side, I just have a squared over b squared. Okay, I can bring this 3 and 2 together to make 5 and bring it onto the right-hand side. So I get 2 root 6 equals a squared over b squared minus 5. Then I want to square both sides again. So on this side, I've got 2 root 6 all squared, so that's 4 times 6, so 24. And that equals this guy squared, so that's a to the 4 over b to the 4 minus... 5 times 2 times a squared over b squared, which is minus 10 a squared over b squared, and then plus 5 times 5. Okay, we can subtract 24 from both sides, so we get a over 4 over b over 4 minus 10 a squared over b squared plus 1 equals 0, then multiply through by b to the 4, and then rearranging, we get that a to the 4 plus b to the 4 is equal to 10 a squared b squared. Okay, and I claim that this actually isn't allowed. Let me bring this to the top of the whiteboard and I'll explain why. Okay, so we have the a to the 4 plus b to the 4 equals 10a squared b squared, but I claim that this is actually impossible. Now, why is that the case? Well, if we just firstly look at both sides, if a was a multiple of 3, then certainly a to the 4 would be a multiple of 3. And on this side here, we have an a squared, so this guy here would be a multiple of 3. So that means that b to the 4 must be a multiple of 3, and that implies that b is a multiple of 3. So if a is a multiple of 3, then b is a multiple of 3. Okay, and because of the symmetry of this equation here, the exact same thing holds for b. So if b is a multiple of 3, then a is also a multiple of 3. Okay, so if either of them are a multiple of 3, then both of them are multiples of 3. But remember, if we go back to the start, we said that a and b are co-prime. So combining those two pieces of information, it follows that neither a nor b are multiples of 3. Okay, so neither a nor b are multiples of 3. Okay, now what we're going to do is just look at some generic C, a positive integer, and C isn't a multiple of 3. Okay, so that means if we look at C mod 3, it's either 1 or 2, but remember 2 we can write as minus 1. So in fact, C is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 3. Okay, so now all we've got to do is just square both sides, and then hopefully things will start to, to make sense. So if we square both sides of this thing here, c squared is congruent to plus or minus 1 squared mod 3, but that's always going to be 1 mod 3. Okay, so basically I'm saying that if we have any natural number that isn't a multiple of 3, when you square it, you're going to get something that's congruent to 1 mod 3. 
Now, if we go back to this equation here, we said that a and b aren't multiples of 3. So if we, we can then apply this result here. So we know that a squared is congruent to 1 mod 3. And b squared is also congruent to 1 mod 3. Okay, so a squared is congruent to 1 mod 3. So certainly a to the 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. So let me just write that up here. So we're essentially just looking at this equation mod 3. So a squared is congruent to 1 mod 3, so so is a to the 4. So this guy here is congruent to 1. Similarly, b squared is congruent to 1, so b to the 4 is congruent to 1. And now this right-hand side, we have 10. Well, that's congruent to 1, because 10 is 3 times 3 plus 1. a squared is congruent to 1, and b squared is congruent to 1. Okay, so we have on the left-hand side, 1 plus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 3. But of course, then we get that 2 is congruent to 1 mod 3. And this is certainly not true. Okay, so we arrive at our contradiction. So if we go back to the start, what our assumption was is that root 2 plus root 3 is rational. But we arrive at a contradiction, and thus root 2 plus root 3 is irrational. And that ends the proof. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you Wednesday evening for the 1K special. Have a great day.